major challenge we have is fund. If we can be assisted by augmenting our working capital, we can go far beyond what the American dream is called. Because as a cow fattening person, which I have livestock, I could even go into milking, whereby I can supply the milk factories for milk. My staying here, all this water leaf, banana, I used to kill the bulls, repair them. First, the water leaf, if it grow, go sell them. I used to plot this water leaf, sell, pay school fees to my children, feed myself. Any woman that is not into farming, I advise her to go back and learn how to farm. It will help her in future. The Bank of Agriculture is working along the lines of its mandate, providing credit financing to boost agribusiness at small, medium or large scale. We still have more stories to tell you on its operations, as well as beneficiaries who have started and expanded their farming business through BOA interventions. Keep a date with us next week for more along these lines. Bye for now. Issues in the sports sector remain one of the most debated among Nigerians due to the passion, followership, government involvement, impact on Nigeria's external image on our national life in the sports parliament. The NTA offers Nigerians deep views on issues with experts in the sports sector offering in-depth analysis, hindsight, insight and foresight towards elevating Nigerian sports to the zenith on the floor of the sports parliament. Sports Parliament, a unique platform for sports discussions, showing live on the NTA. Keep a day with the parliamentarians. Good eyes have it. I never get this kind of thing, or I hear it. In the Bella Ward, that you go for me, sure, teach your bar, touch your own, for what they look. COVID-19. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk App for iOS or Android. You can also... App for iOS or Android. You can also... App for iOS or Android. You can also... short of great plans. The measure of our success, we know, will lie in our ability to diligently implement our ambitions and the strategy which has been laid out. President Yemi Oshibajo at inaugural meeting of Poverty Reduction Committee assures Nigerians of more results-driven approach. Proposals they have submitted uh, differs and they're not able to harmonize now. Health workers failed to reach consensus on hazard allowance. Plus, 
No wild polio resurgence in Nigeria, says authorities. Good evening and a warm welcome. Thanks for joining us on NTN Network News. I am Jumwe Yusuf. We are live in Abuja. Adeola Kami Akere will be joining us from Lagos and Kemi Oshin is in, the, in our Ibadan studio. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says the federal government's plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years will not be based on a business-as-usual approach, but a very simple common-sense strategy that will deliver the results. Vice President Oshibajo at the inaugural meeting of the National Poverty Reduction with Growth Strategy Steering Committee in Abuja says government would adopt a different and more effective approach in actualizing the objective of eradicating poverty poverty in the country for the sake of delivering results. State House correspondent Jide Onifade tells us more. They can surely lift 100 million out of poverty in 10 years. Fortunately, we have already started, but we need to unlock the challenges of slow implementation, inappropriate targeting and absence of adequate resources. President Muhammad Ubari at the inauguration of the steering committee in June was optimistic that 100 million Nigerians could be lifted out of poverty within the next 10 years. And this is the task before the committee headed by Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju. Nigeria has never been short of great plans. The measure of our success, we know, will lie in our ability to diligently implement our ambitions and the strategy which has been laid out and the impact that it will have on the lives of the people, the young job seekers for whom we must provide opportunity, the entrepreneurs who we must assist in growing their businesses on scale, the farmers whose livelihoods we must secure, and the children whose dreams we must make come true. This is a task that we will approach with the utmost rigor and dedication as we commence our work in earnest. And the work starts at this first meeting where members looked into the terms of reference and the composition of the technical groups that will work in various areas. The idea is to sit down first, you know, to look at the terms of reference, that's what we discuss. Then to have the composition of the technical working group that is going to work in all the various areas. And then to review the membership of the technical working group. So those are just the issues that have been discussed for today. And then the next meetings will define when the technical working groups actually will commence work and the scope of their work. When this next meeting uh, we are hoping to meet immediately the week after Salah uh, so that the steering committee now will be able to uh, clearly define the terms of, uh, and the scope of work that will be carried out by the uh, technical working group. Members include six governors representing the six geopolitical zones of the country, the secretary to government of the federation, the minister of finance, budget and national planning, the minister of industry, trade and investment, as well as minister of agriculture, and the Minister of Labor. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NT News. To other matters now, the Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC offices in Port Harcourt have been sealed by the Federal Inland Revenue Service for close to 48 hours. The action may not be unconnected to issues relating to unremitted taxes. Robinson Deratide has the report. They told Niger Delta Development Commission NEDC offices in Apa Road and Easter Bypass in Portacod were sealed by the Federal Inland Revenue Service in the early hours of Thursday, 8 July. While the action came as a shock to the staff, leaving them stranded for two days now, NEDC management is yet to issue a public statement on the development. Findings indicate that the action was carried out by the Federal Inland Revenue Service headquarters in Abuja. Some Potako residents call for amicable resolution between the two government agencies. Everybody feel bad when you can't assess your place of work due to one reason or the other. But definitely if the parties involved could sit down and uh, talk about the issues, I think they will resolve it. And trying time to come and seal the office. We are most of the activities of NDDC is being reached to the youth and the people of NDDC. To, to me, I, I believe it's not uh, ID for now. At least uh, they should negotiate so that the two offices will be open. 
The River State Secretariat of the NDDC along Oluwa Road is, however, not affected by the development. In Portacourt, Robinson Deratayde, NTA News. Meanwhile, NDDC offices located in the Oda Niger Delta states have remained open for business despite the ceiling of the headquarters by the Federal Inland Revenue Service for purported unpaid taxes. Gofa and Shaji compiled reports sent in by correspondents from some of the states. From Bayelsa, Aya Parisi reports it was business as usual at the NDDC office in Yenagua, where insider account denied knowledge of any ceiling of NDDC offices by the Federal Inland Revenue Services. It was the same scenario at the Imo State Office of the Commission, which was in full operation when NTA News visited along Potakot Road, Oweri, as some of the staff were seen on their duty post. And from Uyo, Kelvin Samuel reports that official activities were also ongoing at the NDDC office where staff and others having businesses there were going in and out of the state office. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTN News. And Nigerians have continued to react to the alleged non-payment of 1.8 trillion naira taxes by Multi-Choice Nigeria. They advised the Federal Inland Revenue Service and Multi-Choice Nigeria to find a way to resolve the matter amicably. Adiola Kanmi, Kanmi Akeri has the details. It that Multi-Choice Nigeria makes 35% of its revenue from Nigeria and it operates the most dominant satellite TV network platform in the country, with a monopoly over many popular league games, particularly the English Premier League. It was therefore surprising to Nigerians to hear that Multi-Choice Nigeria is owing the federal government 1.8 trillion naira in taxes. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, during the week appointed some commercial banks as agents to recover the said amount from Multi-Choice, accusing the company of not giving FIRS accurate information on the number of its subscribers and income. If it is found out that multi-choice is owing and multi-choice can't pay and, and they, they, they don't want the business to be closed down. I think the, the South African government, if it so wishes, can intervene you know, you know, in a way that will, uh, will create a, 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 a give and take scenario. Former Director General of Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Muda Yusuf, believes that with cooperation, both parties can find a truce. The amount involved is, is humongous. We are talking about 1.8 trillion naira and uh, over 800 million dollars. That is huge. Uh, we know that in resolving tax disputes, there are quite a number of channels. For instance, we have the tax tribunals, uh, which have been doing uh, a great deal of work resolving disputes between the taxpayers and the tax authority. So resorting to the tax tribunal uh, uh, as a last resort, I think is something that uh, should be a court. Meanwhile, Multi-Choice Nigeria have denied everything, saying it has always complied with the tax of Nigeria in a state the company that with FI regarding on goal hope that will be resolved. We apologize for the poor audio in that report and uh, to remind you that uh, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mohamed Nami, will be joining me in the course of the program to shed more light on these two fundamental decisions taken by the agency. Now, moving on, authorities of New Bamali Polytechnic Zaria have reunited the nine students released by bandits after four weeks of abduction from the institution with their families, six of the students in Kaduna and three orders in Zaria. The school authority said the abductors released the students early Friday morning around Sabon Bruni axis of Igabi local government area. Now to security matters, Chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya says the welfare of fighting forces will continue to receive desired attention under his leadership. Chief of the Army Staff stated this during a visit to wounded soldiers at the 44 Nigerian Army Reference Hospital Kaduna. Mohamed Umar Anjiki reports. 
It is the maiden visit by Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya as the Chief of Army Staff to officers and soldiers wounded in the battlefront. Now receiving medical attention at the 600 Bedford for Army Reference Hospital Kaduna. The Army Chief's presence at the hospital is for confidence building not just to the wounded soldiers, but to troops in the theater of operations. Those that require other services that are not here, we are also making effort to ensure that they get these services. Sometimes some are constrained in this COVID that have imposed some restrictions on our movement. But we are gradually sorting them out, and now all our patients will be adequately treated. The hospital has successfully treated many officers and soldiers wounded in the ongoing fight against insurgency, banditry, and other operations. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Marajingi, NTA News. The Defence Headquarters has created human rights and gender advisor in the armed forces as a means to address gender-based violence and related social vices in the barracks and the military. The Chief of Defence Staff, General Lucky Irabo, stated this in a message at a sensitization and awareness campaign on gender-based violence and human trafficking organized by the Defence Headquarters in Abuja. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa has details. Women are special beings that form the nucleus of the family and constitute 49.3% of Nigeria's population. Despite the critical roles of women in the family and the society, they are said to be relegated and often fall victims of gender-based violence. 28% of Nigerian women aged 25 to 29 have experienced some form of physical violence from the age 15. That 15% 15 of women have experienced physical violence within the past 12 months. This sensitization comes on the heels of several ongoing campaigns to address human rights, sexual and gender-based violence, which assumed an alarming proportion in the country, especially with the advent of COVID-19 pandemic. This campaign on human rights, gender-based violence and human trafficking, organized by the Defense Headquarters, is aimed at creating awareness on the social vice and to explore avenues of reversing the trend. Let our barrack community, our women and children and school children to know the implication of this issue of sexual and gender-based violence and to speak out. The Defense Headquarters recently launched a gender-based framework for the armed forces of Nigeria. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Meanwhile, spouses of officers and men of the Nigerian police force are meeting in Abuja to chart a way forward for policing with quality parenting strategy and life after retirement. Francis Form reports that the one-day engagement is geared towards addressing the ills amongst police families in the barracks. Faustina Ngozi Egbunike though not wearing police uniform, but lives in the barracks because she is married to an officer. For her, raising a child in the barracks comes with its own peculiar challenges, and trainings of this nature redefines their roles in nurturing a well-cultured generation, as well as coping with the challenges of being a wife to a police officer. We are advocating that wife, most especially, should be at home and take care of the home front so that our children will not be causing nuisance. When you train a child, you train a nation. Uh, mommy gave us hope today that we can live better life. So mommy is more concerned about the family in the Nigerian police force, having better children. Wife of the Inspector General of Police, Hajara Usman Al-Kali Baba, is not just sitting on the fence, but using poor platform to push for a better welfare for the women and ensuring they become role models to their children. The first person after God you respect, I think, is your darling husband. I am coming on board with a new hope and expectation to change the face of power across the board, bringing oneness, prosperity, and positive results. Behind any successful man, there must be a woman behind him, and vice versa. If you have a peaceful home, definitely we are going to have a peaceful office. This is the maiden engagement of Pua under the leadership of Hajara Usman al Kalibaba. Franks is from NTA News. In Network News, more reports when we return. Don't go away.
Mr. Kaku when it comes to data. Get a Glow MiFi for 12,000 Naira and get up to 60 gigabytes data free. The National Pension Commission, PENCOM, is pleased to inform all its stakeholders, particularly retirees, of Treasury-funded federal ministries, departments, and agencies, MDAs, that His Excellency, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, has approved payment of some outstanding pension liabilities of the federal government under the Contributory Pension Scheme. Specifically, the President has approved... Standing accrued pension rights for verified and enrolled retirees of Treasury funded MDAs that are yet to be paid their retirement benefits, as well as the backlog of death benefit claims due to beneficiaries of deceased employees of Treasury funded MDAs. Payment of 2.5% differential in the rate of employer pension contribution for federal government retirees and employees, which resulted from the increase in the minimum pension contribution for employers from 7.5% to 10%. Payment would take effect from July 2014. The board and management of PENCOM appreciates His Excellency, Mr. President. Announcer, the board and management of National Pension Commission, PENCOM. Association of KB State Indigen in the Federal Service present reception and dinner in honor of Attorney General and Honorable Minister of Justice, Malam Abubakar Malami, S.A.N., celebrating a man of excellence and a distinct definition of a leader. Date, Saturday, 10th, July 2021. Venue. Sheraton Hotel, Abuja. Event kicks up at 8 p.m. Join us this month of July as we present a award to an outstanding leader, philanthropist, technocrat, and a gladiator with enviable track records and sterling performance in different spheres of life. The Royal Fighters of the Day, the Emirs of Gwandu, Arugungu, Yawuri, and Zuru. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency Abubakar Atiku Bagudo, Executive Governor of KB State. Guest of Honor, three Senators and eight House of Reps members represented KB State in the National Assembly. Chairperson of the occasion, Haji Salamatu Husseini Suleiman, Chief Host, Alhaji Mohammed Musa Bello, Host, Alhaji Abubakar Ismail. It is going to be an event to remember in the history of King. I they look for a pension fund administrator. We're soft, make sense, we care for me. Shy. No, be the time when story go enter the matter. Join over 700,000 satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium pension. Active today, premium tomorrow. The Nigerian privatization program has come a long way. In over three decades, the National Council on Privatization, through the instrumentality of the Bureau of Public Enterprises have reformed well over 230 state enterprises. And these have caught across various sectors of the economy, from the telecom sector, to the power sector, to the ports, and even the pensions reform program, were all embarked upon and successfully implemented by the Bureau of Public Enterprises. So on the 13th of July this year, we're hosting a global investment webinar, uh, which will be chaired by His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. We would like to showcase the opportunities that are available in line with our work plan for the investment uh, to partner with the government you know, in taking advantage of these uh, opportunities. The 
The National Board for Arabic and Islamic Studies, NBIAS, in collaboration with Al Ansar Foundation, cordially invites you to a two day NBIAS Stakeholders National Conference theme Role of Arabic and Islamic Education in Advancing Peace and Harmony in Nigeria, date 11 to 13 July 2021. Venue National Mosque Conference Hall, Abuja, time 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Special guest of honor, Malam Adamu Adamu, Honorable Minister of Education, Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence, Sahad Abubakar II, Sultan of Sokoto, Chief Host, Muhammad Bailo, Honorable Minister of FCT, Professor MS. You're welcome back. Earlier in the news, I told you that the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mohamed Nami, will be joining us on the news to shed more light on the two decisions taken by the agency, which is quite a surprise to so many Nigerians. You're welcome to Network News. Uh, good evening, my sister. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you join us. Um, this week has been what sort of surprise to the nation as you took two fundamental decisions, that is the ceiling of the NDDC on the ground of not paying tax for many years, and uh, the multi-choice group with 1.8 trillion naira, you know, non-payable, which they've not paid in tax. And um, this is quite a serious situation. Can you tell us more about it? Thank you very much uh, for the comment. Uh, if you recall, sometimes in April, we did some publications, one directed at uh, the Ministry Department Agencies for Government, and uh, the second one directed at private business entities. In the publications, we gave the Ministry Department Agencies for Government 60 days in which we expect that all monies, tax monies in their custody that they have deducted from their contractors' uh, payment should be remitted because these monies are monies that government releases to them who fund uh, uh, their budgetary requirement. But when they deduct and they refuse to re uh, remit them to the government, government find it difficult to fund uh, it's critical uh, uh, budgetary requirement. And as such, government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the, the subnationals continue to borrow money in many cases to fund their budgetary requirement. That is the foundation of the issues. We draw the attention to the requirement of law. We draw the attention to the fact that they were just agents of collection. And as I can assure you, and for the lack of uh, compliant, task compliant culture in Nigeria, the same agencies of government that ordinarily should help the government that appointed them to serve this country re are continually refusing to remit taxes that they deducted from payment to contractors. Okay. And on the part of uh, multi choice, this is a company that has operated in Nigeria for a long time. And uh, it is on record that in the past five years, Federal Inland Revenue Service has made all efforts to ensuring that it audits the tax returns and records of the company. But I can assure you, they have continually denied us access to their records. They have de continually okay. refused if, if us I might, access if to I might their come in. It, yeah. If I might come in. If I may come in, 18 years is quite a long time. Why did it take so long? And um, why bringing it up, it up now? And what is the response of the two entities to these decisions you've taken? Thank you very much. Uh, the agencies, uh, uh, the, the, the entities have come up uh, strongly to ensure that we sit down with them on the round table so that we discuss and iron out uh, the issues, including uh, officials of government at even uh, uh, levels that you least expect. So what has happened in this case, particularly that of multi-choice, that apart from the 
father we have been continuously engaging in the last five uh, five years on the 16th of september 2020 we received an intelligence of the aggressive way they have been planning the attacks uh returns to to the government of federal republic of nigeria by of manipulating the FRS automated tax system, or manipulating and in the situations of subscription payment not seen on their entire system, advertisement uh, reported on systems show up, show up less than 50 percent of revenue collected. Input VAT does not reflect sales of decoders and number of subscribers. There were also issues surrounding fluctuation VAT remitted despite increase one on the vat rate by the Nigerian government better uh, and also increase in vatable sales and services. That is also the most worrisome of, of it all. You, if you look at the data we provided, Nigeria accounts for about 34% of the record that is available to us of the customer base and revenue base of uh, multi-choice. But one thing that Nigerians have not maybe heard from us is that multi choice, because of the number, because of the volume of the transactions, have also a dedicated server for Nigeria, for the customer base of Nigeria, a dedicated one. And that server is located outside Nigeria. So all efforts by any person to have access to that uh, the server has been very, very, very unsuccessful. And that is why we have to take this uh, position that we have taken now. Okay, indeed. Um, uh, apart, apart from the multi-choice group, the some HDDC office from the reports I read earlier are still open. So what other measures are you taking to enforce payment of these taxes? Well, we have discussed extensively, like I told you, even with some cabinet members, and uh, we have reached an agreement which would meet not to Nigerians between now and Monday on the way forward because, like uh, I responded, uh, 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 one of the persons you interviewed said, we are agencies of government and we should not be seen to be fighting. But at least what we have done is just send a signal to any ministry, department, agencies of government that business is not going to be usually in this country, you cannot keep government money and you force government, whether at local government, state at, or at federal level, to continue to go borrowing. You know that wherever goes borrowing, it is said continually go to uh, goes are borrowing. So this is why we have taken this decision and for purpose of peace and for the fact that the businesses will continue and for the staff to resume office, our position will be made known to the Nigerians between now and Monday. So how would these banks, you know, sort of selected banks, implement the getting back your money to the coffers of the federal revenue, the, the freezing of the account? The bottom line now is that it is a crime, not on, only a, an offense, for any commercial bank in Nigeria to release any money belonging to multi church Africa or releasing any money belonging to multi church Nigeria from the multi for the, from the, this company's account to any member of that company and or to any service provider. You should know one thing. Tax debt is a priority debt all over the world. So for that purpose and for the instruction we are giving to them in line with the relevant sections of the law, it is now and it will it will be it will, it will be unfair of them because they know the consequence for them not to sweep all the balances in the multi choice account into federation account having received the instruction from us so we want to assure you that the banks know the implication of this and they have not got option than to making sure that all payments or all in credit into that account from the time they, from the moment they got uh, the instruction from us remains the money that belongs to me and you intervening us. In other words, the money belongs to all Nigerians and it should not be allowed to be taken by anybody, including shareholders, 
uh, and other stakeholders of uh, multi-choice. Okay, thank you so much, Mohammed Nami, Fed, uh, Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service. We do hope that these decisions will spur other entities to pay their tax on time. Thank you so much for coming on Network News. I appreciate you. Thank you. Now, in order to forestall impending industrial unrest in Kaduna State, the federal government has inaugurated a 10-man committee to resolve the dispute between the Kaduna State government and the Nigerian Labor Congress. The committee inaugurated by the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngege, which has a time frame of 21 days to report back on what they have done, is headed by the permanent secretary of the ministry, Dr. Peter Yimari Tarfa, with the secretary to the Kaduna State government, Malarebe Lawala, and Deputy National President of NLC, Najim Yassin and Hashim, as co-chairman. After appealing on behalf of Mr. President, I'm also appealing as Minister of Labor, father of labor unions, and friend of Kaduna State government. That let us all trade the path of peace. The disagreement over what should constitute a hazard allowance of junior and senior health workers will continue to linger. Well, this is as a result of the inability of union leaders to harmonize their submissions and agree on fixed amounts for consideration by the federal government. Minister of Labor and Employment Dr. Chris Ngige expressed disappointment over the development after the latest meeting between the Presidential Committee of Salaries and Health Workers Union. Joseph Austin reports. Discussion between the Presidential Committee on Salaries over upward review of hazard allowance for head workers have been on for over three months. Um, if before it was eroded that uh, everybody who is uh, working in the hospital should um, get the same hazard allowance, we want to point out very clearly that the risks are not the same. We have always emphasized on the issue of equity, not equality. The Nigerian Medical Association and the Joint Health Sector Union are having varying submissions and are struggling to shift grounds. The latest engagement has also ended in a deadlock. We also will take both positions back to presidential salaries uh, committee and look at it with salaries, incomes and wages and then we can then take a government position. On the threat of strike by both unions, the minister says he has called on them to obey labor laws and withdraw the idea. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. Still talking health matters, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency says Nigeria's wild polio virus free status is not under threat as there has been no case of wild polio virus isolated anywhere in the country since the certifica certification in 2020. This is against the rumor of an outbreak of new polio variants in some states. The agency says the 22 cases of acute flaccid paralysis discovered in seven states are non-wild paleoviruses. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed a detected case of the COVID-19 Delta variant in Nigeria. A statement from the agency says the variant was detected in a traveler to Nigeria following the routine travel test required of all international travelers and genomic sequencing of the NCDC National Reference Laboratory in Abuja. The Delta variant, it says, which is recognized by the World Health Organization, is of serious concern due to its increased transmissibility, which has so far been detected in more than 90 countries and expected to spread to more countries. The SCDC is urging Nigerians to ensure strict adherence to public health and social measures and get vaccinated as the COVID-19 vaccine is safe. 
The distribution of letters of engagement and the school feeding programs have been flagged off in Abia State after the train of independent monitors for the federal government's four cardinal national social investment programs. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, who was represented at the event, stressed the need for proper monitoring and implementation, which he said is dead to the Buhari administration. Steve Lolea Nwakolo reports. The four programs, which include the Empower Nigeria, as well as the Homeschool Feeding Program, aimed at increasing school enrollment by providing meals to skilled children. We are engaging them to monitor to make sure that the children are actually fed with good food and number of times required. And ensure that you follow the guidelines and regulations that are applied for submitting your reports. With us, sincerity, we will be able to make sure that all the vulnerables have benefited from this program. I promise to do the work well and make the work very, very successfully. 70 beneficiaries received their letters of engagement and tablets for the monitoring exercise of the National Social Investment <laughs> Program in Abia State. From Mumwaya, Steve Lona in Waukulu, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Adiola is in our Lagos studios with more reports on NTA Network News tonight. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Jumai. Good to see you. The Customs Strike Force team. Team Zone A has reinvented its anti-smuggling drive by intercepting goods right within the seaports once import manifest revealed that they are contraband. The coordinator of the team, Hamadou Shaibu, said this while briefing the media. It is an unusual seizure. Four containers loaded with unprocessed logs of woods of different sizes. The value of the timbers, which is above 900 million naira, were intercepted and with their papa ports for contravening Estan's law, placing a ban on wood on the forest list. This is unwholesome. We sh they should have a change of mind so that together with them, we will build a viral, strong and dynamic economy. The Customs Strike Force Team Zone A has enjoined intelligence support and knowledge-based surveillance in its anti-smuggling operations, and this led to the interception of another container filled with 550 cartons of footwears, apart from the 1,709 bags of foreign rice seized in a single month. These formed parts of the 86 seizures made between January and June with duty paid value of close to 1.7 billion naira. If they are contraband, we seize at the port and, and forward the same to them. In this connection, for the past two weeks, we have been able to seize two containers carrying what? Synthetic carpet grass. It's, it's, a, it's, pro, it's prohibited. Within the period under review, the Customs Strike Force team did not just raise the man notices in the region of 1.9 billion naira, but there is a reorientation of business owners on the need to comply with regulations on importation. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Port authorities and regulators are restoring sanity within the Tinken Island corridor with the removal of shanties and structures constituting security threat and impeding on ease of doing business. Michael Olaleye reports. Sporadic shooting within the Tinkan Island ports last Saturday was the height of prevailing insecurity within the corridor. The situation is now guiding regulatory agencies on ways of returning sanity to the environment, adopting a simple security approach that the best way to get rid of criminals is to smoke them out from their hideouts. In the night, they go beyond what we thought. Even to the SNI, in the daytime, you see the hood drones covering the road, any vehicles or truck coming out of the port, they stop them to collect levies, so that's illegal levies from them. This building at Oando bus stop, a convergent point for towns, popularly called area boys, has succumbed to demolition. It is part of a clearing exercise tagged 360-degree cargo clearance 
aimed at opening up the corridor for seamless operations. What we want to do now is to consolidate on that um, uh, action and ensure that consistently trucks that have businesses at, in the ports come into the ports only, either to pick or to take out um, uh, cargo or, or to drop uh, empty containers. Shanties, kiosks and containers obstructing traffic flow were not spared, including a market right under the bridge at Liverpool. It is a successful exercise that has opened up the corridor, but the worry here is what now becomes the reclaimed expanse of land. In the next few weeks, you'll see some construction works will spring up to boost the activities in the port. Sustaining this initiative by the Nigerian Post Authority and the Lagos State Government will not only ease traffic along the corridor, but also reduce turnaround time for cargo delivery and evacuation. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. You're still watching the NTA News. There will be more reports after this break. Please stay on. Mommy is ready to receive me a bundle of joy. Mommy is making my home cleaner and safer. We are Dettol, Dettol. Illnesses can happen at home too. That's why Dettol and me together will make my baby's home safe and to protect from up to 100 illness-causing germs. That's why moms want to be Dettol. Dettol Shaw. We are Dettol, Dettol Shaw. Go TV Biggie goes promo don't lie. Better Diggy levels. Better grooves no hard at all on top Go TV. Make you not miss this a wolf as Go TV price don't go down low. For inside Biggie goes promo. Now you fit get Go TV decoder. Go tenner with one month max subscription. Will be 9,500 naira before for 6,900 naira now. See discount. <laughs> Make yourself enjoy football for inside your house. Cross your leg. Watch BB Niger drama and shows for Africa Magic and International Series. Them Biggie Goals promo now for you. Better discount. Go get your own now now for only six thousand nine hundred naira to enjoy max levels for Go TV. This offer not go to tell. Go TV. Love it. History, um, well, it's history. So either you know it or you don't. My advice to the younger generation is that they should learn from what we have started and what we have left. I did things that ordinarily I should not have been doing. What that meant was that I was working hard. Whatever assignment you are given in life, Putting your best. The military years were a disaster. Smoldering effects of all that is what we are trying to cure. Dear compatriots, our country can be as great as we want. Let us all commit ourselves to its greatness. We must be willing to set aside our differences, unite and stay as one. In our expansive landmass, human and material resources and plurality lies our strength. Let our challenges lead us to rediscover our common ground and together let's find solutions. This will take some time, so it requires patience, tolerance, and forgiveness from every one of us. Let all hands come on deck to protect and transform our country. Let us unite and see each other, not as adversaries, but as brothers and sisters. Together, we can build a better Nigeria for ourselves and for the next generations. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with support from Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Let me see 
very categorically that we have told ourselves a lie that we have a housing deficit of 17 million. It is a lie. Setting the record straight regarding housing in Nigeria. Plus, as we build the roads, we now improve the enforcement capacity, we provide the infrastructure, so way bridges will be part of infrastructure for enforcement and protection of the roads. One on one with the Minister of Works and Housing, Friday, 10.30 p.m. on NTA. <laughs> Thanks for rejoining us. Working within a target budget is crucial to the successful completion of any project. That is the reason skilled and reliable quantities of heirs are expected to be hired. This was the take of leadership of the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors at a meeting with the management team of the Nigerian Television Authority. Adebola Brooks and Sunday reports. Quantity surveying is one of the parameters needed to balance the equation in construction globally. Building owners or clients most times in the process of saving costs do not include these in their plan during construction. These analysts say is responsible for building failures the world has witnessed to a greater level. It is in a bid to tackle this challenge that members of the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors are in NTA to further strengthen ties with the media for more enlightenment of the public on their roles. Quantity surveyors ensure and insist on delivering value for money to clients through optimum utilization of scarce resources. People using substandard material, they are not professionals. Mm -hmm. We have quack engineers, they just go there. Instead of using the correct measurement specification for roads, they use whatever they see and at the end collapse of building. The institute has about 10,000 membership spread across various organizations in the country, including the NTA. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Thank you, Adebola. Sports update is next with Bade Adele. He's going to give us the latest happenings in the world of sports. Hello, Bade. Many thanks, Jumai. Let's begin with the Minister of Youth and Sports Development. Sunday Daru is being joined by the Chairman Senate Committee on Youth and Sports Development. Senator Obina Ogba will say the proposed Federal University of Sports will be in line with the current realities in the sports sector world over. The duo spoke at the Senate Committee on Sports on Sports Public Hearing on the bill to establish the institution. We are now in an era of digital sports where eSports is raking in over 32 billion annually. The sports value chain is massive from point A to Z. The objective of the bill is to encourage the advancement of learning and to hold out to all persons without distinction the opportunity of acquiring higher education in sports. Moving on, with some qualified teams failing to appear at the ongoing Second Africa Mini Football Nations Cup in Elaji, Ibadan, or your state, President of the African Mini Football Confederation, Ben Ashraf, says there is no cause for alarm as necessary readjustments have been effected to ensure a hitch free tournament. During the, the first time, we have four groups one, two, three, four groups, and each group four teams, but now, we have uh, the first group with the fourth group together and second group with third group together. So for us, it's no problem. Uh, the strong team all is here. All strong team is here. And, uh... and finally, the National Hockey Super League ends in Abuja this Saturday as attention will shift to the classification matches. Friday's games, however, produced some interesting results as reigning men's champions, Kadastars, lost for the first time in the league, while Kada Queens were also defeated by Delta Queens, with IGP Babes and Yobe Queens winning their respective matches. And of course, you can catch you know, classification matches on Saturday at the Moshuda Biola National Stadium in Abuja. And that's all on sports. It's back to Jume. Thank you, Bade. And um, reports just reaching us says President Mohamedou Buhari commiserates with government and people of Kwara State over the passing of Emir of Lavia G. Al Haji Saadu Kaiwo Haliru. His statement from the presidency says the MS initiate and sustain.
sustaining peaceful coexistence in the domain, especially in accommodating the Emir of Lafayette's legacy of hospitality, harmonious living, and encouraging civic responsibility will be missed. The president prays that the Almighty God will accept the soul of the departed and comfort his family. Now, Nigeria and Australia are building stronger partnership in the economy, trade, and cultural ties in a new diplomatic relations. At a former presentation of Nigeria's new envoy to Australia and Slovakia, Ambassador Suleiman Dauda Umar to President Alexander Van der Balen in Vienna, the two nations express hope for a better engagement in their bilateral agreements. The two oil producing nations have been in diplomatic relations for decades. Both countries are engaged in exports in addition to energy deals. Weather prospect for tomorrow, Saturday, is next. Hello there, I'm Theodora Itum. There have been some heavy storms along the fringes of the north. Presently, we have active systems which is expected to give morning storms over parts of the northeast and Kebi, while moderate rains are expected over FCT, Benue, Edo, Delta, and Cross River. Then as we go into the afternoon, continuing into the evening hours, rains and thunder are expected over parts of Zamfara, Katsina, Kano, Kaduna, Taraba, along the central region, as well as the southern parts of the country. As far as our temperatures are concerned, we've been cooler thanks to the rainfall and cloud cover. So our temperatures range mostly in their 20s to low 30s along the southern states and plateau, while central and north are in their mid-30s. That's the forecast for Saturday. Thank you for watching. And the weather forecast brings an end to the news tonight on Network News. And don't forget, before we go, to be a star with NTA as we wage the war against rape and rapists. I am Juma Yusuf. Do have a wonderful weekend.